Rastafari. See what I mean? Take it on low. Take it on low. Can we talk to my people them, see? Yeah. Is there people in the house? House of the present 116 Earth Day celebration of His Majesty Emperor Haile Haile Selassie the first power of the Trinity. There's still no peace in the house. We want peace, Lord. We want peace. We want peace. Why Judah? Because Haile Selassie was from the tribe of Judah. So we find or see that we are from his house, and his house is the house of Judah. And yeah, we established 93, so the house of Judah was celebrated this 15 year already. For us to see guns as a gold, you see, Arwana as a gold, and lots of Rastas have taken on it as a means of survival in the community. Rastas are from the community allowed to see in the community. But when you're in town, it's anyone, everyone for himself. Do want peace? Do you know when I became a Rasta and I married my husband, get kids, and I started realizing life is more than that, you know, than uh, going out and having parties and fun, you know. So I rather now much put more, much more effort with my kids, you know, it's much better like that. I'd heard that there was a community in the, in Lasna, quite a big Rasta community. So I wanted to see what the reality was for the women, because one always meets men, always meet brothers in town. You don't often see the women, because they're like at home with their children or looking after the house. So I came to look for the community life to see how it was in reality. See what I, mean? I and I is like me and you, but we don't want to deal with segregation or separation. So that's why we say I and I, which means we are one. My name is Leah. I'm from Johannesburg. Moved here eight years ago in this house of Judah, in this community. And I've been a Rasta for about nine years now. Most of us, we are from different places, from Joburg, Cape Town everywhere so basically you know in Rastafari as well it's nice to have this kind of a community when anything happens then you have the sisters immediately coming and checking what to do and what not you know to help the situation make the situation feel better Nana I think your shoe is ready now don't break it again <laughs> yeah I'm gonna go down now fix the breakfast and the lunchbox. And I think we should start with your hands first. <laughs> As you can see, we don't normally brush the hair or anything. I use a lot of water for, because sometimes they don't like it. They are not used to brushing and things like that, so they feel painful. Sorry, Nana, I'm finishing now. Okay, so I need to also get the breakfast here. Yeah. I was not always a vegetarian. I just became a vegetarian when I came a Rasta, but also I'm not a very strict vegetarian. It's, it's also on the Bible, you know, we quote that on the Bible as well. That's why we don't eat meat. Okay, come guys. Let's go out. Bye bye guys. Oh, it's chilling nice now. <laughs> bye bye Janina. Bye Papa. <laughs> We are like, so like a collective group, collective community from different parts. So we are brought here by one spirit of like doing good and God and just our spiritual side of it. But we are all individual in the way we do our things, you know, with the aim of uh, just uh, love and sharing and togetherness, you know. We are all individual, but we are all Rastas, you know. We have one faith but individually in our own ways, yeah. My name is Sister Jackie. I'm a Rasta sister living in Judah Square. Um, came here from Durban about six and a half years ago. I didn't want to come and live in Nasa straight away because I just saw actually it was very difficult. At that stage, the sisters on the square were surviving without um, power in their houses, without water in their houses. 
what inspired me was actually to see how the sisters could just smile and deal with their children so patiently. And that was my main sort of vision even when I left Durban to come and live in the community was to, to teach my skill or to share my skill with, with actually anybody, men or women, who are happy to learn because I've um, always supported myself on my work and anybody can. I mean the cost of living these days is very high and it's tough, it's tough to be poor. That's the whole idea of being self-sufficient. You know, we don't want to work for Babylon where we end up just being slaves in a system, but you have to work. That's like life. So I see it. I mean, I'm, if I didn't work, I would be very poor, <laughs> waiting for Gaston to make some money. The women do are generally housebound. They are not bound, but they, you know, even as I would love to be at home. That's like where your heart lies, is to be working at home. So most of the rest of the women are at home. Yeah, looking after their children or keeping the house tidy and doing the laundry and cleaning and everything. In our family, we, um, we don't have a strict order in that, like, I don't cook for my house when, when I'm menstruating. I mean, I'm the woman in the house, and so I carry on. But if it comes to community gatherings and stuff, then if you, in your time you don't cook or you don't come even, you just stay at home. You respect that order. That's, there's a lot of brothers that feel very strongly about that and sisters who feel very strongly about that. So we just, when you're in your time, you just stay at home. And it's, it's fun. It actually gives you a bit of a rest. When I came into Rasta, I thought, great, this is like a philosophy which means that women are supposed to stay at home and be like that mother at home. So it was like, perfect. This is like right for me. You know, It's always what I wanted. But our reality is such that Gaston's a musician and you can't really make a lot of money doing music. So I had to like hold the fort, you know? Yeah, man. We are going to juggle. Yeah. We call it juggling. <laughs> Me and my husband. <laughs> How we ended up here is the business that we are doing. We are doing curious business. Some places are much more rougher, not like a, so quiet. So he decided we come in nice now. And he came here, stayed here. And we started looking for a place to trade in town, got a place. And that is how we ended up here. <laughs> I do keep myself busy with other few courses and things like that, but my future is to have a business, an art gallery in my house and uh, like a restaurant, more like a home-based business where I get to interact with people much more. That is my dream. Hello. I'm Shikasi Mjidiswe. I'm originally from Sydney, Australia. I moved to Judah Square 10 years ago and been living here ever since. Fruit and veg because uh, when I was younger, that was one of the first businesses I went into. Like, yeah, it was always just sort of something that I was <laughs> interested in. Mother traveled 64 countries in the whole of the world and she just decided that Neisner was the place she would love, like to settle. And well, she always wanted to settle in a community and start where there was a lot of children, Rasta children, start like a school, that was her dream. And at the end of the day, she only got to start a crash. And from there, we made a home here. Been staying here ever since. Hi, Ray. Yeah, my name is Maxi, Maxi Melville. Uh, I'm the chairperson of the House of Judah movement. And we stay here in Judah Square for the last 14 years. And I'm Rasta since 1982. Tafari was the name of Emperor Eli Selassie. Ras means uh, prince or chief or head and Tafara actually means creator so if you add the two together Rastafara it becomes head creator.
in the beginning in Genesis God said let there be grass let there be animals let there be herbs so which means ganja is part of that creation since the beginning grass the power right fire burn yeah man so the prayer was there and the prayer was done so yes ganja have a, 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 a long history and when it ended up with Rastafari, it was simply like, yes, it was passed on from father to son. But yes, for us, it's not just about smoke. For us, it's very sacred. It's like a holy herb. Yeah. For instance, we don't use wine like the Christians do in their churches. So that is what we burn as that sacrifice. We don't smoke it with no tobacco, no drugs. No any other thing, just clean green. If it was me, I would, I would let my kids enjoy it as a private thing, as like a meditation. We sit down together and it's now, we're sharing this bliff together. Whereas not just like to puff, I mean some children walking around with ganja in their pockets. And it's their supply for the day. It's, it's not the way I would operate. But, they don't seem to be kids that are fighting and naughty and they're like, they're happy and they're healthy. So it's the parents' prerogative. Yeah. We find in Ezekiel 34 that he said, God will raise us a plant, you see, and we will suffer no more hunger and defeat. And we know, not we believe, we know, that's the ganja plant. So, yeah, ganja is a very important source of income and I will say I don't have any moderation against selling of ganja, but we also see that nowadays because of its income, people became greedy, you see. Last year, I made half a million. We'd rather try to focus on education for our youth so they doesn't, mustn't fall in the trap of selling ganja and think that's the only way. Because education is liberation, so our encouragement to the youth is education. When I first took a drag of a spliff was when I was three years old. My mother gave me a first drag of a spliff, but when we actually moved to Nisna, was when I started using it, um, like smoking on a constant, because of the children, most of the youths in the community smoke. Some of them start from as soon as they can hold the spliff. I got my surname Kasonde, and then the King Selassie, I, the last ring I was made. Actually, I have to go to my jeweler and get my rings clean. I'm just on my last piece, a uh, coin with a ganja leaf in it, filled with cubic stones. <laughs> my jeweler said, say, replacement value is 56,000. Cheers. <laughs> Most of us youngsters in the early 80s was like, how can I say, just illusion because there was not that much education. So most of us as young kids, we end up going seeking job early. Some became political activists, some became gangsters, and some of us became Rastafari because Rastafari was also a way of knowing your identity or showing your identity. Be. So yes, Rastafari give us integrity and dignity. So this is why I end up Rastafari. This is the Kailetu River Trail. This is the entrance of one of the houses to the project. Started in the early 2000s, 2003. Let's go and take a walk. Rastafari. The aliens, they are like, like, like sponsors. They like sucking the water. What we learned, this is actually a long-term project. It sprang out by we dealing with tourists, and it was just like a matter of we want to offer them more. And obviously, the nature was the alternative. So nature is very important. Yes, so 
places like this, as you can feel now, I mean, there's some space to think, and this is what people need, space and time to develop themselves. Because of its start of male dominance, it grows mostly that way, and the sisters, they come along afterwards. Now it looks like it's an imbalance. It's not a, how can I say, a male dominant thing. But yes, we got different roles. A woman got a different role as a man do. And that's the difference, not like to say they are inferior, you see. They just have different roles to fulfill. So an, a woman knows that her space is within the house and to keep everything fine and a man is placed outside the house. And the emperor teaches us if you teach a woman, you teach a nation. If you teach a man, you teach an individual. Like any mom and every parent will want their kids to have a good education and pursue their dreams basically and be happy, you know. That is the kind of dream that I desire for my kids, to have like a brighter future. Like I say, we, you disconnected from the spiritual because I, we're so caught up in the material world and um, yeah, it's like an empty zone and the, just the moral structure of society is so weak. In my um, sort of quest for Rastafari, it was yeah, to be connected to a, a group of people who are at least trying to live a better life is, in a collective way is very positive. It's just a very rude word, Jess, and you mustn't even use words that you don't understand the meaning of. Okay. I met him one night actually, we were just, they, had, they were playing music around the fire and we just enjoyed our evening together. So then, kept coming up to visit him again and again and yeah, we disconnected. There are, I think, racists within the movement. People who are like very deep black people who are who, like, staunch on their, on their ways and whatever, but it's just ridiculous. It's like to me, just, that's why I say I ignore it. I live my life with my husband and I mean I can't help it that I'm white and that I happen to be connected to a, a coloured person. That's just the, what the Lord gave to me, this man who was right for me. Yeah, I will say it start up a movement for black people, by black people, but as it grows nowadays you will find you find white Rasta, Indian Rasta. So it became like as Bob Marley say, out of many we became now one. Because of it's a spiritual movement, it's a rainbow movement and a righteous movement. We can't stick to colour or to a certain race. So yeah, I mean Judah Square, I mean have a different kind of different vision. We come from apartheid and we know what means segregation. We know what is it to be rejected. So we don't want to build on things that we know was not good for our upbringing or our survival, you see. So yes, we take the Rasta stand or platform to show the world, you see, even within Rasta, there's an opportunity of, how can I say, unify our different peoples, you see. So, yeah, that's why we want to move away from have it a black thing only and as people think a male dominant thing you see, to show the world is a slowly progressing movement you see. So we we don't rush but we know we are moving you see, and that's for sure. I feel even in, in Rastafari it's very important for the woman to be led by the man because and I'm very comfortable with that. Um, the man is he's the head of my house and because he isn't a churchgoer I just feel I don't want to go there before him. So that's some things that we're working on. I would love to be in the church actually. Um, and for my children to be getting all those teachings, it's very important. 
This first Saturday of the month is not only we that come together, it's across the universe where Rastafari is. Naya Bingi is rising. The man must be there constantly keeping that heartbeat because that drum is like a heartbeat. That's why you hear how we play. Too good. Too good. One of the reasons that church is good for, for people is uh, to exercise your faith and keep yourself strong. You know how to deal with the problems much better. So we, when we come to the Ayabingi, we see this as our church, we see it as our school, and we see it as our meeting place. The purpose of that fire is for Aina to put Aina moderation and frustration in there. And as that fire burns down, Aina is supposed to feel free. And we know we are human. But that's why there's every first Saturday in the month there's the same vibration to show every time to clean I myself again and again. So the voice of the people is the voice of the most high. So when we come together here, we call for the presence of the most high and he make himself visible. He make himself known amongst we because he said, if we ask, you see, you already know, for great is the glory of the Lord, highly high. <laughs> warriors that must make sure we are the guardians and keep the order. So Rastafaria was teaching us about our past, you see, and it's dealing with our present and yes, it also shows us the future, you see, and the future for us is bright, it's red, gold and green.